Hey, Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. It is so awesome to be with you. Whew, watch how I'm all psyched up. It's Monday, yay. I know most people hate Mondays, but Monday's like actually my day off. That's when I get all my stuff done and enjoy myself. So um, anyways, I want to say thank you to all of you who came into yesterday's video. We had a great turnout. Yesterday I did a vlog. I went shopping at my local CVS and bought stuff and talked about life. If you didn't see that, check it out. I think you guys will enjoy that. And I told you yesterday, I said, we're going to talk today about the magical silver mirror. That's right. And I thought to kick that off, I'd show you a little treat here. This is something I just got. I have it wrapped in black cloth, and I'll explain that in a little while. But check this out. I got a big, beautiful silver mirror. Oops, that's the back side. <laughs> there it is. There's our big silver mirror. Isn't that wonderful? This is a really wonderful thing. You know, the silver mirror is a very magical tool. And many of you know I did, did a previous video on working with the black mirror, which we have. In fact, let me just show you my black mirror. I've got that right here. This is the black mirror. And it's similar to the silver mirror, but you can see they're a little different. I do a lot of work with the black mirror. Personally, I'm a fan of the black mirror. But it, occasionally, I really like to switch it up and use the silver mirror. And according to Scott Cunningham, um, among the Wicca, the silver mirror is actually more traditional than the black mirror. Uh, because silver represents the moon. And I bought this giant mirror to put on my altar to represent the moon mother. I'm setting up another moon altar and when it's all finished I'll show you to it. But this is going to be one of the centerpieces of the altar and it represents the moon. Isn't that beautiful? It's shiny and silver. So <clears throat> anyways I thought before we get into showing more about that <clears throat> I would um, read to you a little bit here about the magic mirror. And this is taken from Scott Cunningham's Book of Shadows. Uh, here's a wonderful chapter back here. Let me just read this to you here. And it says, um, this is a section called The Magic Mirror. There you go, The Magic Mirror. <clears throat> and it says, find a good round mirror of 13 to 30 inches. Oh, I'd love to get a giant 30 inch mirror. Um, 13 to 30 inches in diameter. Ideally, it should be encased in a similarly round frame, painted black, but make do with what you can find. I wasn't able to find a nice round mirror in a frame that I liked, so I chose this mirror, which is unframed, but I think it's just beautiful. I think it's just perfect. And I was checking the measurements on it, and if you want to figure out how to check your mirror, you just measure straight across the diameter will tell you what size of mirror this is. So this one actually, if you look at it here, measures at about 12 inches. So 12 inches, he says in here 13 to 30. I think 12 is good enough. And you know, remember this with magic, make do with what you got, okay? So I found a beautiful mirror that I liked, 12 inches, didn't have a frame, but I like it better. I think it's more streamlined and it really looks like the moon to me, okay? So, all right, now let's continue on here. Okay, so he says, uh, after purchasing the mirror without haggling over the price, uh, bring it home and wash its face carefully with a simple of mugwort. Now, I'm out of mugwort today, so I just used regular glass cleaner on it. But in the future, I am going to do this. Now, let me tell you what it says. It says, to make a mugwort simple, Steep one tablespoon of mugwort in three cups of hot water for 13 minutes. Strain and cool before using. So you make a basically a concoction that is mugwort water. Okay, and then it says when the water has dried, cover its face. Uh, when the mirror has dried, so you wipe the mirror down. Basically, you get your mirror. Okay. And then you make your mugwort simple and you wash the face of your mirror with that, okay? Now, then you let that air dry, okay? 
and it says, um, when the mirror has dried, cover its face with the black cloth and lay it where it will not be touched until the full moon. So you see, I've got my black cloth here. So I did clean my mirror and then I took it and I wrapped it in this black cloth. So it's veiled. Okay. This is an important part of the tradition with these mirrors. Okay. So we got our mirror covered. And it says, on that night, which is the night of the full moon, expose the mirror to the rays of the moon, preferably outside, but through a window if necessary. Charge the ritual mirror by de describing circles over it with your hands, palms down, the right hand moving clockwise and the left counterclockwise, saying, Lady of the Moon, Great Diana, you see all things, you who sees all things and knows all knowledge. I consecrate this mirror in your name that it might aid me in my magic. Okay, so basically, let me just demonstrate that for you. So what you want to do is on the night of the full moon, you uncover your mirror out of its black cloth. And then you lay your hands over it. So you move in circles. So like clockwise with the right hand and counterclockwise. And you do both of those at the same time as you chant your prayer of inviting the goddess Diana or whatever moon goddess you invoke to bless that mirror. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's beautiful. Now just visualize, you know, the rays of this moonlight coming down on you. No lights on you. Know, that's what I said. Turn off all the lights. If you're inside, and just let the moon come in. I've done this before. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Then it says, now hang the mirror on an east-facing wall. Keep it covered when not in use. Okay. Now, what I'm going to show you here in just a few minutes is, I actually don't have the ability to hang this on the wall. I suppose I could hook it all up, but I prefer it to be sit simply sitting. So I've got a beautiful stand that I'm putting my mirror on, and I'll show that to you in a minute. And it says, expose the mirror to the rays of the full moon at least three times a year. When it gets dusty, if it should, wash it with the mugwort solution. If you wish, you may use a psychic oil to draw the symbol of the moon on the back. Some use the mirror as a means to achieve astral projection, but I don't recommend this. One can get the feeling that you're trapped in the mirror and this can be dangerous to the newcomer. Now, I personally disagree with that because I actually have used it for astral projection and had great success. Um, I actually, though, find that many times the black mirror is actually better for astral projection. I use the silver mirror to tune to the goddess and also to do cast spells, uh, which I'm going to show you here in just a minute, a simple spell you can cast. And it says, never use your mirror for anything other than magic. Have a separate mirror to use for everyday things like combing or brushing hair and so on. Keep the magic mirror covered at all times when not in use. Isn't that wonderful? So that's a little bit from Scott Cunningham's Book of Shadows. But um, we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you my altar setup with the magic mirror. Come on along. Now, as you can see here, I have a beautiful little plate stand. It's made of metal. They make them of wood as well, but I just liked this one because it has beautiful kind of curling designs. Looks kind of Victorian. I'm going to put this right here on the altar. Now, this is just a temporary altar because I'm actually building a larger altar for the, for the moon. Uh, I'm just, today, I'm just using my Sabbath altar for, for the video. But um, as we say, we uncovered our mirror. Now, on the back of this mirror, as you can see, the back is opaque. And as the book was suggesting, you could, for example, put the symbol of the moon on the back of your mirror. Hold on just a second. This is some astral this. oil that I have. Now, you can use any oil you want. There's different types of oil, flying oil, spirit oil. This happens to be an astral oil that I have, and I think it works wonderfully. And basically, I'm just going to take my finger here and then on the back of my mirror 
I'm going to trace the symbol of the triple moon. Just visualize the moon in silver light as you do this. And you know we have the triple moon of the crescents on each side of the moon. And as we do that, we just can chant a prayer, Great Moon Mother, bless our moon. And as you can see, we got the crescent moon, the triple moon, symbol of the goddess, inscribed on the back. And you can just let that dry. Make sure to cap up your oil. If you're like me, you get into things and you leave your oil sitting over and then you flip them over. <laughs> I know I've done that many times, so I'm going to cap that oil. There you go. I'm going to take my mirror and just place it in its holder. There you go. Now ignore me. <laughs> Let me zoom back here. You can get a better picture. Now, as you can see, there's our mirror. Now, this is my incense burner that I have here. I'll move that out of the way. And usually what I do, if I'm going to use this for scrying at night, I'll put a candle right next to the mirror. But just put it a little to the side. And uh, as you can see, you want to try to create an open field. So you don't want to necessarily look at your reflection. That's why I like this stand, because it angles it up towards the ceiling. Um, and if I played around with it, I could get a better angle on it. But basically, you want to kind of have an open field as much as possible. And then at night you dim the lights and you light your candle and you start to look into your mirror. And you can just sit back and look into it. You'll notice as you watch it, it's just like you start to go into it. Mirrors are very fascinating. They're very captivating. And ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated with mirrors. But that's all you need to do to work with the magic mirror. And that's a wonderful way to scry. And so you can look into it and have visions. At night we get a better effect, but today I'm, I'm going to be tied up so I can't film this after dark. But um, that's one way to work with the magic mirror. Now, let me show you another technique here as well. Now, another way to do some amazing magic with your mirror is to get a grease pencil. In this case, I actually have a, an eyeliner pencil. That's all I could find, but that's okay. As we say, make do with what you got. And if you want to send power out into the universe, like let's say you want to send protection to a friend who's in danger, well, you can visualize that friend in the mirror and trace a rune on the mirror. So, for example, the rune Algiz is a great protection symbol. So we could just trace the rune Algiz on our mirror. See how that is? And then you visualize the mirror as a doorway. You see your friend through the mirror. As if you're looking through a window, visualize your friend and then send that rune that's on the mirror through the mirror to them. Very powerful ritual. Very simple. Yet magic does not have to be complex to be powerful. And you can do as many runes as you want. Uh, you could do a bind rune, or if you have another sacred symbol, something that's unique to you, you could trace a pentagram on your mirror. That's a wonderful thing to do. So like, for example, if we wanted to send protection in the form of the pentagram, we could also trace that on our mirror. Just take your time. Trace it and visualize it. Remember, visualization is everything. Now, this is a little rough. My pencil needs any a better pencil. But you get the idea. So as you see, you can, again, put another symbol on your mirror. Now, the good thing about using makeup pencil is this can literally be washed off. And I would encourage you, when the spell's done, that you just wash it off. And your mirror is fresh. Now, when your spell is done, Again, clean your mirror, make it shiny and silvery and bright. And then take your black cloth, oops, don't knock your mirror over, and drape it again to veil your mirror. The silver mirror has a tradition of being veiled when not in use. And it looks beautiful and mystical to have a veiled 
item on the altar. Isn't that wonderful? So guys, there's a little bit about working with the magical silver mirror. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, just so you know, if you want to buy one of these mirrors, you can look online. I bought this one on eBay. Just look up craft mirrors and you can type in round craft mirrors or 12 inch craft mirrors. Now, if you want to get a smaller one, they have them in all sizes. So you don't have to, you know, stay with a 12 inch one or a 13 inch one. Scott Cunningham just offers as a suggestion because that's traditional, but you can use smaller mirrors as well or larger. Uh, but anyways, this one is a craft mirror, 12 inch round glass craft mirror. So that's one way you can look it up. Um, anyways, I am so glad you're here. Uh, I hope you'll keep it here at Spirit Channel. Um, tonight I'm going to put out another video a little later that you don't want to miss. Uh, and this is going to be Psychic Bob's Economic Prophecy. And it's just a little hint of what's coming in 2017. And speaking of 2017, you know, a lot of you've been writing asking about my annual predictions. And we're going to have that uh, on January, or excuse me, December, December 31st. It's a tradition here at Spirit Channel. We release it on New Year's Eve. So make sure to be here or definitely on December 31st for a more in-depth look at uh, what 2017 is going to hold. Lady Angela is going to be with me and we're going to do a wonderful uh, look into the future. So make sure to be here for, for annual predictions on December 21st or December 31st. I can't talk today. <laughs> I think I need to just sit back and go back to my scribe beer. That way I can't break anything or cause any harm. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't broken my mirror yet. Ooh. I don't want to break a witch's mirror. That's a lot of bad luck. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for being here at Spirit Channel. Listen, if you enjoy this, show Psyche Bob some love. Like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends. Let's get out the word about Spirit Channel. And if you can, if you haven't done so, hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. We sure love you to be here. Thanks for being here. We'll see you back here a little later tonight for our economic prophecies. Blessed be.